Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today, I uh, my group want to present about topics in sports psychology. We are student from KPTM Bangi, um, taking course about diploma in sport management. So before that, I want to introduce you to all the all members the in our group, which is Muhammad Dina Bimusan, myself, Wan Dimas Azra Dimun Azam, Muhammad Hafiz bin Abdul Rahman, and Muhammad Ahmad Shahid bin Sam Hasan. The first topic, which is Chapter 5, Imagery in Sport Performance and Hypnosis in Sport. So this chapter, I will pass to Mr. Hafiz. Can you continue the presentation? Um, okay, I will continue this presentation. I will talk about theories of why imagery works. Uh, first of all, uh, psychoneuromuscular theory uh, is uh, defines that imagery results from the pattern used during actual movement. And second, symbolic learning theory uh, differ from psychoneuromuscular theory in that sub liminal electrical activity in the musculature is not required. Uh, third, uh, attention and concentration set theory. Uh, correlation of both theories with the physiological aspect. Uh, next, I will talk about article. Uh, this article speak about Ronaldo. Visualization, including visualization, mental rehearsal, symbolic rehearsal, convert uh, practice, imagery and mental practice, internal imagery and external. How Ronaldo has applied it? Uh, Bio-informational theory, probably the best developed th theoretical explanation for the effect of imagery is lens, 1977 and 1979. Bio-informational theory. Based on the assumption that an image is a functionally organized set of proposition stored by the brain, the model uh, holds that a description of an image consists of two main types of statement, response pro propositions and stimulus propositions. Stimulus pro propositions are statements that Describe specific stimulus features of the scenario to be imagined. For example, a weightlifter at a major competition might uh, imagine the crowd. The bar is going to lift and the people sitting or standing on the sidelines. And respond proposition on the other hand, a statement that describes the image response to the particular scenario. They are designed to produce physiological activity. For example, having a lifter feel the weight in his hand as he gets ready for his lift as well as feel a pounding hurt and a little tension in his muscle is a response proposition. The crucial point is that response proposition a fundamental part of the image structure in length theory. In essence, the image is not only a stimulus in the person's head to which the person responds. Imagery instruction, uh, especially MGA, that contain response proposition, elicit greater physiological response. Um, then do imagery, imagery instruction that contain only stimulus proposition. And the quote is, uh, a good athlete always mentally replaces uh, competition over and over, uh, even in victory, to see what might be done to improve the performance the next time. The conclusion, um, <clears throat> athletes are always on the lookout for technique that will allow them to get better at their game, uh, whether it is... Uh, who is looking to break his best score or a hockey goalie who is trying to get shot out in the next game he plays. Amateur and professional athletes are constantly trying to find ways of improving their performance. 
one performance enhancing technique that has been the subject of many empirical studies uh, and theoretical speculation is the practice of imagery. Defined in its most general sense, imagery is an experience that mimic real experience. Thank you from me. Okay, thank you, Hafiz. Um, so, we will continue about chapter 6, which is aggression and violence in sport performance. So, can you continue, uh, one day, Yes, yes. Um, I'm going to continue the next slide, which is I'm going to about chapter 6. So, let's go. So, so first of all, theories of aggression is theories. Sigmund Freud, uh, 1950, view that people have internal aggression. Next is, according to Freud, it can be avoided but can be regulated through discharge and fulfillment. Social learning theory. Bandura, 1950, argue that aggression will lead to further aggression. Suggest that aggression is a functional of learning. The pattern will continue until the circle is broken by some type of positive or negative reinforcement. So the next is branded theories of moral reasoning and aggression. So the first is individual is willingness to engage aggression is, re is related to her stage of moral reasoning. Uh, in daily life, we just use good moral reasoning uh, but when play a context sport we ignore the moral reasoning that are called bracket morality reform reformula frustration aggression theory berkawit consider that frustration will not lead aggression but lead to re <coughs> readiness aggression stimulus is the marker that lead athletes that are uh, to perform Aggressive. Other factors uh, that can lead to aggressive like environment, parent, and it is. So the next is another theory about aggression. Social learning theory maintain that aggression is a behavior learned through the process of reinforcement and modeling. Bandura 1973, Bloom and Smith 1996. In the view, participation. Uh, in the view, participation in sport may teach and reinforce either aggression or uh, sport mention. So the article is, the first is, Ramos simply doesn't care about hurting his opponent. The second is, the most shallow card in the champion uh, league history was collected by Sergio Ramos. So the third is, La Liga player with the highest number of red cards in history. So the fourth is, Ramos has a lot of experience in committing fault when the officials are looking. So this is a video that Ramos are being so aggressive. We can, we can watch in this slide. Ramos doesn't care about this cut. Oh. So aggressive. <laughs> so the conclusion of Ramos is aggressive play in sport can result in injury but isn't but isn't considered violent because it is within the rules of the games. However, sport violence occur of sport violence occurs on several levels and include player coach and spectator and happen well outside the rules. So, I'm going to pass my slide to Muhammad Daniel. Okay, thank you. So, the last topic which is chapter 7, burnout and drug abuse in sport and exercise. So, this chapter I will pass to uh, Mr. Amar. So, can you continue our presentation? Okay, uh, yes, for sure. Uh, I will talk about burnout and drug abuse in sport and exercise. Okay, for this one is silver training stress model. Uh, negative training stress response model, uh, silver 1919. 
Okay, for the first uh, point, <laughs> focuses on physical training, but recognize the importance of psychological factors. Okay, second point, physical training stresses the athlete physically and psychologically, and can have positive and negative effects. For the third point, uh, positive adaptation is desirable. Uh, and the last uh, negative adaptation, adaptation is undesirable, leads to overtraining, st uh, staleness, and burnout. Okay, uh, for the for the training stress imposed, uh, first point is positive adaptation to training stress. Second point, training gain. Uh, third point, negative adaptation to training stress. Uh, fourth point, uh, lack in training again. And the lastly is uh, training syndrome, standard overtraining uh, and burnout. Okay. For, uh, for the article, uh, in, uh, firstly is uh, the hardest thing to uh, understand is you can just put your mental health <coughs> on a time out according to world champion swimmer Michael Pep. So for this point, uh, depression was so severe. Uh, second point, mental health issue. Third is it probably, it probably was one of the hardest thing I ever did. Uh, for the uh, fourth point, mental state can affect their physical safety. Okay, this is uh, our video. So, watch. Okay, uh, this video, how about feeling uh, uh, Michael Peps uh, to use this uh, drug or mental happiness? 
So for the conclusion, uh, burnout means physical or emotional exhaustion caused by long-term stress and instinctive method of dealing with stresses, avoidance, and this is one of the reason why statistically there is a gradual decline in sport participation as well as we get older, as well as participation participation player burnout also includes players that continue to participate but not put in the same effort as they are capable of so what are our top tips for you to avoid players burnout and help get player reaching their uh, position okay thank you okay that's all from us uh thank you and if you guys want to know where we get the information from there's some reference here so thank you for lending your ears and uh, assalamualaikum assalamualaikum thank you